Will you say with me, say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have stepped into 2022, the year of ease and plenty. I declare boldly that the Lord has made room for me. And because of that, I experience increase on every side. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. He has redeemed me from poverty, from sickness. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I give heed to his word. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I forbid any e-sickness, any sickness or disease to operate in my body. I forbid any cancer or tumor or growth to exist in my body. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, that I am growing in leaps and bounds. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the word that God has said to me about my life, about my family, about my business, about my career, about my marriage, is finding expression. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare the voice of God is very clear to me. The word of God in me causes me to prevail. Even though a thousand may fall by my side, ten thousand by my right hand side, it will not come near me. For you have given your angels charge over me, lest they, lest they dash, lest I dash my foot against any stone. My pathway is life, health, prosperity. I have Abraham's blessing. Put your right hand on your chest in the name of Jesus. I have the wisdom of God. I have what it takes to make my goals reality. All that I need is in me right now. I am enough. I have enough resources on the inside and the outside to make my dreams happen. My dreams happen with ease and speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, all things are possible unto me. I thank you, Father, because 2022 has been my best year so far. I shattered old records. I set new records. My finances has exploded. My business has grown. My family is strong. My health is intact. In the name of Jesus, shout amen somebody. God bless you can have your seat. Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage you that please consistently let's keep saying this when we're by ourselves. Let's keep saying this. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 55. And I want to really encourage you as a church, please, I hope you began to set goals. I hope. Bible says faith is a substance of goals. Bolaji the Woods translation. So what the Bible says is a substance of things hoped for. Hoped for is goals. Yeah. So it's good for you to set goals. I've seen people that are very discouraged at the end of the year. And the reason why they're discouraged is not because God is not faithful. They didn't set clear enough goals. So when the end of the year came, there was nothing to rejoice about. So someone says, where should I set goals? Maybe some key areas. Spiritual goals. Spiritual goals can be like, how do you want to grow spiritually this year? How many souls do you want to win for Christ? Another goal you want to set is set goals around your health. You know, what do you want your energy level to be like? What do you want your weight to be like? If you don't set your goals for your weight, you'll be growing, you'll be multiplying in weight as you're growing older. The third thing you want to, the third area you want to set a goal for your life is this. Family. What do you want to happen between you and your wife, you and your kids? The fourth area is relationships, your friends. Who, who, who's going to be, are you, what type of friends do you need? What type of friend do you need to maintain? The other goal area is what? It's finances. How much do you want to make? But more importantly, how much do you want to be worth? Because wealth is not measured in how much you make. It's measured in what? How much you're worth. The other goal you want to set also is your business or career goal. So business goal is that I want my business to grow to this amount in profits. Career goal is that I want, um, I, want, um, I want to become a director, like he said, you know, at this phase of my life. So it's good for you. And let me tell you something. Any goal that is not written down is a wish. Praise God. 
Yeah, so you can't have a goal in your head. Goal setting is not something you do in your head. It's something you do with pen and paper. Yeah, there's something very powerful about pen and paper. Pen and paper is so powerful in the Bible that when prophets see vision, the angel will say, write. That's always knocks me out. Like, angel will say, write. Because you can forget it. Praise the Lord. Please, if you have empty seats, help them fill it before they start sending others to the overflow. Um, ushers, we have some few seats in front. Let's fill it quickly. You know, amen. We had a fantastic end of the year service. Did you see the videos? <laughs> Praise God. Of course, we didn't have a car park because people were sitting there in their thousands. And um, our whole church could fit into Coliseum about two years ago. <laughs> and could fit into Coliseum about two years ago. We used Coliseum as an overflow. Coliseum was a hall 10, 10 blocks away. Coliseum was packed out up down. Coliseum was about maybe two and a half this size. Was packed out up down. This place was packed. The what do they call it? The the car park was the car park was packed. People sat from the car park. They sat into the car park into the gates. It was you know it was phenomenal. And um, one of the stories that taught me was a lady that had not been to church in a long time because she had some kind of challenge. And after the service, she told me that God just really spoke to me in a special way as you preached today. And that just touched me. People got born again. Bagada also, we had massive, Bagada had about four or five overflows. Abuja packed out all of the churches. We just thank God for, this is a revival of the Holy Spirit. And we were, we were live on TVC. So I had some of the, you know, influential people just say, oh, we saw you on television. We blessed us by the message. How many of you watch on TV? Maybe you, did you watch on TV? Okay, I have some people that watched on TV here. Awesome. Was it good on TV? You felt it? Praise God. Internet, we had maybe 50 to 70,000 people watching online, you know, all over the world. Praise the Lord. All right, let's get into the Word of God. Isaiah chapter 55. So, what I want to do today is to talk about the prophetic word for the year and really talk about how to walk in the prophetic word. So, how to walk in the prophetic word. So, the first question I want to answer is this, which I'm going to answer from 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. You know, if you've been Christian for some time, you know that almost every year, most churches will tell you that this is the year of this. This is the year of this. And they will say, this year I declare. Then people say, you know what? I'm tired of all this relation. Because they've been declaring all these years, I've seen no changes. So the question is this. Why is it that prophecies fail sometimes? Has that happened to you before? What you said, I, I said, this is the year, and it didn't happen. Why is it that sometimes prophecies fail? The reason why is that if I know why prophecies fail sometimes, what can I do? So that in my own life, the prophetic word will find what? Fulfillment. Glory to God. Are you ready? First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. 1 Timothy chapter 1, in verse 18. This is what the Bible says. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to prophecies which went on before, that by them you may war a good warfare. I thought that this was the thinking, this is religious thinking, that hey, when God tells you something will happen, all you have to do is to fold your hands and that thing will happen. No! This is what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? God says this in a very powerful way. He says, he says, prophecy are weapons of warfare. Oh my God. That means that when God gives you a prophetic word, it's not about folding the hands. Prophetic word are used for warfare. What does that mean? When God tells you this is the season you are in, when you are in that season... And things are going not the way God said so. You will begin to tell things and say you have to align because this is what God has said for this season. So prophetic words are for alignment. So why doesn't prophetic? So this is what I'm saying. Someone will tell you that, Pastor, I received a word and I thought that this was the year I would get pregnant. This was the year I thought I would get married. This was the year I thought I would build my house and things have happened right now and things are not that there. What is going on? There are reasons why prophetic word doesn't happen. The first thing is this. Why doesn't prophetic word not happen? Number one, because it wasn't taken seriously. So there are people that, you know, you hear, this is what the Lord is saying in this season. By next week, you are not even conscious if you heard it or not. 
Whatever, whatever prophecy is not taken seriously will be wasted. If it's going to happen in your life, you have to take it seriously. That's why you will keep on hearing the prophets say, and the Lord told our fathers, and the Lord told, and the reason they kept saying that was this, they were very, very committed to that prophecy. The second reason why prophetic what doesn't happen is this, because of unbelief. The book of Hebrews says, they could not enter into their prophetic destiny because of unbelief. It says, it, it is the way the same book of Luke, it says, blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be what? Performance. And why don't people believe prophetic word? Because there are reasons why you should not believe it. That's the truth. Experience is one key. Physical things are other key. There are reasons why you should not believe it. The third, thing, the third reason why prophecy doesn't happen is this. Because, because when people receive prophecy, there is no what corresponding action. So, you believe that this is your year of ease and plenty. How come you're not pulling up the contract again? You believe that it's your ease. You believe that this year it will be easy for you to get married. How come you're not working on it? You say, I'm tired. Your, your lack of corresponding action will kill your faith. As a matter of fact, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, faith without works is what? Dead. If the Lord says that you're plenty, what do I do? I begin to open back accounts. Because I'm expecting plenty. Is that not so? Exactly. If, if I told you when you were coming to church today and I said to you that, hey, church is flooded, what you wear would be different. What you wear, because what? Because you understand that church is flooded. You're not going to wear high heels. You're not going to wear a suede shoe because you understand that church is flooded. How come when God says it's your year of plenty and ease, your action doesn't show as though you believe? It's your, they say, ah, let's go and apply for that job. I'm tired, Jerry. You know why you're tired? Because in your mind, you don't see ease, you see difficulty. You don't see ease, you see complication. How do I know I believe what God is saying? Because my action is going to line up. All your girlfriends will say, Angelina, why are you always dressing up now? Because it's the year of ease of marriage. What does that mean? They say, the guy is looking for me every time. He's so easy to get married this year. They say, are you crazy? I'm not crazy. I only believe the word of God. The word of God is for believing, sir. The word of God is for believing. It's not for argument. It's for believing. And listen, I understand the reason why people sincerely why why they don't why they struggle to believe because they, they keep referring to what happened in the past what happened in the past but let me say something to you if you're not careful you can let your past ruin your future but wise people know something remember you know the former things neither consider not the things of old it's a behold i do a new thing he said, remember another thing. The wise people know how to disconnect both from past failures and past success. You know, I, I, was, in, um, I was with Brad Houston, Hillsong Church. And Brad Houston said something and shocked me. This was a year or two after they sang the song, Oceans. You called me out upon the waters. Ocean won so many awards globally. And he said, just for you to know, we don't sing Oceans again in Hillsong. I said, why? He said, because we can't be celebrating past success. Where would the new one come from? There are many of you now. Last year was good. It was good, but it's a new year. There's a new year. I said, you don't, you don't understand. We, we are still saying, oh, spirit lead me where my trust is with that water. The people that sing the song, we don't sing it again. No. He said, because if you build, a, he said, if you build around success, what you have is a castle and a monument that will become of the past. I'm grateful for what God did yesterday, but I'm looking for what he's doing today. Can I prophesy over you? Your biggest testimonies will be in your future. I say your biggest testimonies are in your future. I want to ask you a question. Did you really have people in your life that they used to be this was the re, this was the best house here. Then it moves from best house to it became the first house here. Or it became the best house of that time. Because their testimony moved backwards. 
What makes God beautiful is this. The glory of God is new every morning. And this is why we persist in prayer. Because we're pushing. We're pushing boundaries. Everybody say, I shatter old records. I set new records. That's it. As a family, we set new record. In the spirit, we set new record. As a ministry, we set new record. As individuals, we set new records. And the last reason why prophecy doesn't happen is because of demonic sabotage. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 55, which is our main scripture for today. Prophecy doesn't happen because of demonic sabotage. Hmm. Isaiah chapter 55. So in case you are here, you're like, you know, maybe you're watching online and you're like, you know, I'm, I'm so confused. I'm so depressed. God has said so much. It's not happened. You need to make sure that it's not enough to receive prophecy. It's enough to do something. So prophecy are weapons of warfare. So what do we do with prophecy? We enforce prophecy through prayer. Are you hearing me? So that's why we pray. When we go to the place of prayer, preface, prophecy becomes a weapon we use in prayer. So this is how we pray. You will begin to say things like, Lord, as you have said, I, we are now enforcing it in prayer. You, you, let me give you, let me give you the, the principle of enforcement. The judge can give a ruling and say, this property is yours. But that property already has an existing tenant. So guess what you will do? Even though the property is yours and you have the judgment, you do not go to the property and start living there because you cannot other people living there. So what do you do with the judgment? You will take the, the court church to what? To the belief and get the law enforcement agent so they will come and say, based on this order, they will vacate other people. The judge uses authority. The police uses power, sir. By the time the law enforcement agent comes, they will not come and speak grammar. Out. You know, the belief will come and post the notice and say, the court has said this and put red line. That's the authority. By the time law enforcement comes, they don't use authority. They use power. What is power? They will enter into the facility. Start carrying people out. Start carrying property out. Start carrying. Why? Because they want it to be inside. What I'm saying is that by the time you hear prophecy, authority has been given. How do you release power for, for possession? In the place of prayer, that's what we do. We are producing enforcement, sir. You say, heaven have said this, but let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven have said this about my business, but let your will be done on earth. So we are dislodging things that should not be there and lodging things that should be there. That's what prayer does. Somebody say amen. amen. So in the place... We enforce it. Prayer enforces prophecy. Or else, your prophecy will just be hanging. Look at Daniel. They were meant to spend 70 years in Babylon. They are spent over 70 years. Daniel said, Lord, what's going on? <laughs> Lord says, finally, his son is getting to pray now. Israel was meant to spend 400 years in um, Egypt. Israel was meant to spend... 400 years in Egypt, then they'll spend 430 years in Egypt. So, why does God send this word? So, when God wants to change the life of a man, what he does is send this word. Let's read the Bible. Isaiah chapter 55. Thank you, Jesus. Say, God is good and kind to me. Listen, this is the year you must fall in love with that. I hope you're making up your mind to come for wine press. So once it was wine press, wine press, we, we, normally by next week we'll start fasting for 31 days. And the last five days we focus on Bible teaching, prayer, and power. This wine press, like never before. Someone says, okay, wh why does this church focus a lot on teaching? And the reason why is this. The primary tool for God to change human beings is the word of God. When, pe when the doctors want to know your temperature, they will use what? A thermometer. Is that what they use? They want to know your blood pressure. They use a blood pressure machine. When God wants to change your level, how he changes your level is by his word. Why? I'm going to explain why he does that. So the word of God is the primary tool for changing levels. If you are not a Christian given to Bible study, you will weaken your Christian life. People say, I come to church once in a while. You will not go far as a Christian that way. 
Because the word of God is the primary tool for changing level. When God wants to change the face, the state of a man, the face of a man, what he does is send his word. What he does is send his word. What he does is send his word. So look at what the Bible says. Verse 8, Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thought, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, are higher than the head, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So someone says things like, you know, religion tells you, this. What, some people, let me say this way, a lot of people are afraid of the will of God. And because religion teaches us that the will of God is something terrible, is something poor, is something humiliating. So I'll give an example. When we were young, we were both praying about who to marry. And one of my friends, I said, are you also praying? He said, I'm not praying. No. When I want to marry, I'll just choose. I'm not praying anything. I said, why are you not praying? He said, hey. He said, I don't want God to say, I should marry what I don't like. I said, why does that occur to you? Who do you think God is? God is good and kind. He said, no, no, no. He said, I, I, for this particular person, he said, I don't like ladies on the plus side. I just feel as if I pray, God does actually mind that kind of person. And I said that, why do you think about God that way? That's what religion does. Religion makes it seem as if God would tell you something that is very humiliating just to destroy you. That happens rarely. Someone says, okay, are you thinking of the car to buy? Why not pray about it? No, no, I want to pray about the car to buy you. I want to just buy my C-class so and just go C-class. The C-class is nice because if I pray now, God will say, go and buy Rav 4. Toyota Rav 4. Because in our mind, whatever God says is always poorer, smaller, terrible compared to what we want. But what does the Bible say? Read. It says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You know what God is saying? God is saying, if you're thinking thought, if it's higher, I'm thinking 100. So, if you're praying and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want the C class. God say, why are you doing a C class? Do a G wagon. Some of you, you need to dream dreams that are bigger so that God can help you. I'm telling you, should I challenge you today? Add one more zero to your goals. There's a, pro, there's a proverb where I come from. It says, you need to chew more than what you can so that God can chew something with you. Some of you, your goals doesn't need heaven. Some of you, your goals doesn't what? need heaven. You need goals that attract God's attention. Uh, either dream big or go home. Either what? Dream big or what? Go home. Either dream big or what? Go home. God told Abraham, he says, as far as your eyes can see. He says, he says, see, he says, let me tell you how our thoughts are different. He says, as the heaven is higher than the earth. Do you know the distance between the earth and the heaven? God says, you think you can think bigger than me? He says, I'm way ahead of you. Can I challenge your financial goals? Can I challenge it? Start setting your financial goals in dollars. Then I will see how many of you are millionaires still. Start setting your financial goal in dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a big boy. Uh, yeah, pastor. I just got this. <laughs> you know, you know. When all these young boys, I was, yeah, I, I walk in, I walk. Yeah, yeah. They pay me twenty million. Yeah, put you, yeah, put you, yeah, pastor, you yeah, put you. <laughs> Brother, let's change that twenty million to dollars. Though. Some of you will be on minimum wage abroad. Praise God. You'll be on minimum wage abroad. That means someone walks in McDonald's and the same thing you want to earn. But the thing is this, he says, my thoughts are higher. In life, you promote yourself. Oh. It's when you're in school, they say you move from primary one to primary two, primary two, primary three. As soon as you're out of school system, you now determine where do I want to go. That's why it says, come boldly to the church of grace. He said, come and obtain. He said, he say, he say, as you come, he said, take what you want. Glory to God. So see what he was saying. So verse 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returneth not hither, but waters the earth and makes it board, bring forth and board, that it, watch this now, that it may give seed to the sower 
and bread to the eater. Watch this now. When God wants to change your level, it will give seed to the sower, bread to the eater. But how does he give seed to the sower? Seed means that it will give you the ideas that will produce your goals. It will give you the intelligence that will bring those things to pass. Bread means the physical material, materialization of the things you want to see. How does he sow? Look at the next thing. So shall my word. He said the primary way I'm going to bring you intelligence. The primary way I'm going to bring you ideas. The primary way I'm going to create a pathway for your goal. He said I will send you my word. That's why I said to you that the word of God is the primary way. How does this happen? Let me tell you something there. There's just something about reading the Bible. I'm telling you. One day I was reading the Bible. The Bible says this. When Peter caught the fish, the net began to break. And God says, what? I said, God, what's happening? He said, that's the problem. You are going to catch fish, and you're catching fish. But you don't have structure. Your neck, your structure is breaking. He says, go and fix the structure. It was in the Bible. I didn't see. You will not see that, but there's something in what? He said, the net began to break. One day I was in the Bible, I've explained this to you before. Jesus told Peter, they wanted money for taxes. He said, the first fish you catch, open the mouth. And God told me that every time you're looking for more money, what you know how to do, open it up in another dimension. There'll be more money inside. Let me give an example. What did Apple start making first? Is it not computers? Where's Apple's money coming from now? Is it phone or computers? Why? As they open Apple up, the first thing that was in the first fish was computer. As they opened Apple, they saw phone inside. As they opened Apple, they saw iPod inside. As they opened iPod, they saw iWatch inside. Those things put together can sell over the computers. Question is that you are still looking for what other idea? What is working right now? Father, open it up. As you open it up, you say, Wow, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Then go to start selling what first? What is that selling first? What? What is that selling? Tell me now. What? It was, I think it was flour actually. Rice or flour. As he opened it up, flour. Opened it, rice. Opened it, indomie. Everything food. What I'm saying is that, listen to me. Everyone look at me. Let me, let me. let me help you there. Holy Spirit, help me. Say this well. Many of you are looking for the new thing to do to achieve your goals. Meanwhile, what you have to do is look at what is working. Learn from what is working. Open it up. Something else will come out of it. Because when you do that, you already have infrastructure. You already have resources. You already have materials. All you just need is an opening. Praise the Lord. That's all you need. All you need is an opening. So, when, 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 when we want to achieve a goal in the office, they know this. They say, this is how to achieve. I said, before we talk about new ways to achieve the goal, let's talk about why we did so well first. Because what can we learn from what we did so well that we can bring here again? But the thing I'm saying that all of these things came from the word. One lady asked me, I said, Pastor, I'm very single. How can I get married? I said, be kind. I said, be kind in speech. Be kind as a lady. He said, why do you say that? I said, because in the Bible, the people I saw that were married were very kind people. How did Rebecca find Isaac? They made. See, remember, Rebecca was not kind to Isaac. Rebecca was kind to the servant. How you talk to the Uber driver can affect how your husband will come. Are you listening to me? How you talk to the Uber driver. He was not kind to Isaac or he was kind to the servant. The problem with church people is that when the guy, when the guy comes, you know, this is not the kind of person I want. So they are selectively kind. If the kind comes in Range Rover, you know, come to Range Rover with kind of prophetomic action, hello baby, you know, hello girl. Um, what, what your name? Bempai, Bempera, Rakko. They get, oh, oh, you say, oh yes, I come to harvesters. You know, give me what? Oh yeah, sure, I can do that. <laughs> Even again, I, English, I, English just evolve. Praise God. But when the guy just comes, the James is not so nice. The smell is not so nice. What do you want? <laughs> Meanwhile, you don't understand that that is the servant yeah. that's looking for the wife of the master. Let me tell you something then. The difference is this. You do this, but once you don't do it by revelation, you will not be consistent because you don't understand why you are doing what you are doing. 
Have you noticed the have you noticed the Bible how God provides money for people? The way the primary way God provides money. This is the power. Let me tell you, if you mess with Bible study, you mess with destiny. It's not just prayer, you mess with destiny. Look through the Bible. How does God provide money for people? The way God provides money for people is relationships. He told Elijah, he said, go to Zarephath. I've told a woman to feed you there. He told, I'm telling you, he said, go to Zarephath. I've told a woman to feed you there. There's, there was nobody in the locality. He moved him to Zarephath. But you are saying that I don't have good human, human relationship skills. If you don't have good relationship skills, you cannot have good financial skills because there will be no money to manage. Because money does not move on the road. It moves in people. Sitting next to you are bags of money. And you don't connect with money. You connect with people. That's why I say give. It shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Run it over. Shall what? Angels? No. Shall men give to your bosom. This year, you must have to say relationships that you are just nurturing. Just because you know the Lord has put something in their mind for you. Are you here, somebody? Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me just stop on this because let me, let me stay on this because I feel led to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, the, one of the biggest blessings in your life this year, if the God is with you, is that the relationships that you, remove, you come out of is not fight. I don't have to stop being your friend to fight you. No, no, no. Just say, I will just delete your number. When you call me, I say, who is this? Then you get the message. As I step out of those relationships, there are relationships I must step into. Because it's men that God lifts, use. It's men that God uses to lift men into destiny. Are you here? And if you don't know how to handle human being because of your personality type, you go back and learn it. Some of you are in church now. You've not got into the singles ministry, the business clubs, all those kind of things. You go sleep. How can I plug in? You say, ah, you will meet a lot of people that are irrelevant, but it's the one person you need that is relevant. Look at Jesus Christ. The wise men came to look for him. Did you, do you know who the wise men are? Some say they are wise men. Wise men is just a good Bible name. They are magicians. But God, <laughs> when God cannot find believer, God will use unbeliever. Yes, the magicians came. You know why they came? Some said they were three. They were not three. They were up to 1,000. As the wise men came, you know why they came? Peter and Mary didn't have money. From the place they gave birth to Jesus Christ, they were going to move to Egypt. How would they sustain the child? Jesus, God had to import men that will bring financial resources to lay down for, Paul, for, for Joseph. So when they, come, when they came and they brought the resources, Joseph said, this is it. When God said, go to Egypt, he said, yes, I know I should go. Because before you said so, you have provided resources. There are certain people that you just know that God brings into your life. Don't mess with them because they are for a season, not now, a season ahead of you. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you something. I'm just telling you, you must be after sensitivity. You know some relationship as, you know, Prophet Tommy is here. He called me one day. And this, you know, he called me one day. He said, There's this guy in your church, and he knows he said, he said, that guy, and told me, he said, he said he's going to be very successful, though. But, and told me some things. Just very powerful things. You just build a relationship with somebody, they just say, ah, There's government allocation, no. What a land that you call 200 million, they will give it to you for 50 million. Just because you built relationships. I'm saying so because young people think you go far by running the loan. You go very far by building relationships. Slow down. Your boss at work, build a personal relationship. I have an uncle that became a landlord to his landlord. His landlord says, you are so perfect. I need to begin to give my property. Praise the Lord. The way to build a relationship is to look for what is in other people. What is in it for them? Some people, every time they show up on your phone, there's a need. Yes or no? Yes. Christmas has gone. New Year has gone. All the people you want to be close to, did you send them something? <laughs> you are expecting hamper. <laughs> How many hampers went from you? 
you only build relationship by looking out for what is important to them. If you have not sent hampers, it's not too late. You get contract from an office, you can never even send, ah, ah, you are an harvester. We're generous. It's our nature to be generous. This is a generous church. Go back and say, your boss, go back and give them something according to your size. The pastors that have helped you here, go back and bless them according to your size. Because it's men that God uses to bless men. And some about generosity. People that are generous to you, you never forget. When I'm, a, I'm older now, all the uncles that are generous to me, I never forgot them as a child. For me, child, I never, I remember the uncle. Ah, my most generous uncle is Uncle Kole. You don't understand. Even if I'm going to church, if it's coming, I'll wait. <laughs> ah! You know, some uncles come like this. Even my mom would tell me, ah, me, I cannot collect anybody, anything for anybody. If you come, you're not there. Whatever enters into me, enters forever. <laughs> because the guy has not come, but. <laughs> so, as soon as you come, you see, me and my siblings will just upstairs, we'll just go downstairs. Everybody, hey, welcome, sir. And when it's going, we all see him up to the car. Because the car is the ATM, praise God. He will just dip his hand and just bring it out. <laughs> praise God. Can you remember? Can you, do you know how much that stays in my memory? Something that happened when I was eight years old, seven years old. Do you know I have uncles that can't remember their names? Even the ones that live with us. <laughs> Generosity makes you have mark on the heart of people. They are contractors and they are contractors. People remember what the generous contractor. Praise God. Oh, let's, let's close, please. So, I was explaining. I don't know why I stayed on there, but that's a very powerful word for someone here. Someone has to take action, action, action. So, watch this now. So, this is what the Bible says. Verse, verse 10. For as the rain coming down, and the snow from heaven and returneth not, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth that it may give seed to the soul and bread to the eater. So the first reason why God sends his word is number one, to change our level. The second reason why God sends his word is for assurance. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. There will be time you will be doubting. There will be time you will be afraid. There will be time that things are like, God will give assurance. Let me give an example. Let me give an example. Come, please. Watch this now. This is assurance. If I'm a father, and this is my child. This is my child, my baby. Baby. So I'm going out. And so I'm going out, but I'm not really going out. I'm just going to the next house. But he thinks I want to go out and not into the Muslim park that I promised. And he begins to cry. He said, no, 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 no. That, 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 no, no. I said, I'm not going out. Just next door. He said, that, no, you're going out. If I want him to be at peace, despite the fact that the things does not suggest that is peaceful, I say, take my khaki. Hold it for me. When I hold it, when he holds it for me, what happens to him all of a sudden? He stopped crying because I've given him assurance. God says, when you get to March and it's becoming shaky, when it gets to April and things want to tumble all around, I've given you my word as assurance. That, hey, I'm going nowhere because you have my word. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know what they have told you about 2022. It's going nowhere because I have what? Assurance. Huh? I have what? Assurance. I know the doctor said we thought you could get pregnant this month. But, you know, the way things are going, we found another cyst. We found another huge tumor. You said, doctor, I heard you. But thank God, before I came into 2022, he gave me the keys. And he gave me assurance to show so that he's going to make it happen. His word is what? Assurance. Oh my God. Oh glory to God. Can I have a lady that is, is engaged here? Any lady that is engaged here? And you're proudly engaged? Raise up your hands. Let me see you. If you are um, proudly engaged, you can put on your hands. You know, you're proudly engaged. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see. Anybody? Everybody's coming shy right now. Who is, who is that? Who? There was someone in front. Who? Anybody in front? Uh, who? So, so in the choir? Who? Come, come. Oh, proudly engaged. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. So watch this now. Watch this, everybody. 
God's word gives us what? Assurance. Just, just keep coming, man. This is so good. Oh, wow, I can see. You can just go like this as you come in Jesus' name. Just, you can just, oh, wow. Let, let's, let's just see that love. Oh, wow. Look at that lovely rock right there. What, what is your name? Kofo Hold on to the mic. Okay. And let me tell you something. The day, what's his name? Carlton. Carlton. They take Carlton and give her the ring. Why did she go? The reason why she went that way was this. The ring is assurance. Assurance that before the ring, she didn't know if I was one amongst ten. The chances that I would enter his house was just about two percent. But what does the ring tell you? The ring tells you that I'm committed to you. Glory to God. Someone says, not with some men. I'm talking about kingdom men now. Praise God. <laughs> what, what does the ring tell you? The ring tells you. So, when he gave you the ring, how did you feel? Joy. I, did you I feel, I, I now have something. Yeah. You felt I have something. Sure. God says, I'm giving you my word so that you know you have something. <laughs> God says, before the ring, you will just be toasting up and down. You know when I just toast you, you say, what are you? I'm just dating you. I'm just dating you up and down. Dating you. We don't know today. We don't know a relationship. We don't know another relationship. We don't know where I'm going. can come. You know, but when you have a ring, it means I'm committed to you. God says this year, I'm not just dating you up and down. This year, the reason why I gave you my word is for you. He said, I gave you my word so that you can know I am committed to you. When you go for that business deal, God says, I want you to know I am committed to you. When your finance is at the other place, God wants you to know I am committed to you. Everybody say, God is committed to me. Hey! Hey! Stand on your feet, say God is committed to me. Some people are not standing here. Everyone stand on your feet. Say God is committed to me. Hold on. When you see some girls bring friendly with counting, you just tell them you're wasting your time. <laughs> hey, God, Yaga. When stagnation is coming near you, you say stagnation, you are wasting your time. <laughs> when barrenness is coming near you, you say barrenness, you are wasting your time. The reason why is that I'm the lady with the what? With the ring. Hallelujah. The Lord has put a ring on my ear. He says that I will make room for me. It's my year of ease and plenty. Somebody shout out, receive it. God bless you. you. Can have your seat. Ah, I receive it. <laughs> why does God send this word for assurance? It's because someone say, why, why is God giving us this word for the year? Don't see, because there are some times that the guy will see me away and far, and she will feel lonely. But when she looks at the ring, she says, "Oh no, I'm engaged." There are times you look at your bank account, you're like, "Oh my God, is God faithful?" But when you remember his word, you'll be like, he's faithful. Because the ring is assurance. The last reason why God sends his word. He says, my word will come like rain. Why does God send his word? Because, because, and everyone look at me here. If you had had a bad 2021, if life has not been fed to you, the tendency for you to be expectant of the future is very slim. Because you've gone through this terrible heartbreak. You've lost this investment in cryptocurrency. You've lost this money in business. You didn't get the child what you wanted. You thought you would get married. And people can point figures at you. But you know what you've been through. When you hear me speak, you say, can this pastor be sensitive? That it's not everybody that's had a fantastic year. And I'm just here to mark register. Because I don't even know if God knows my name. I don't even know if God cares about me. Because if God cares about me, why is my marriage this way? Why is my husband treating me this way? Why is my wife going crazy? Look at all my kids. Look at my business. Why am I single at 40? Why don't I have my approvals and my immigration documents? After one year... And when I say believe, you say, it's not say believe. You almost can confront me and say, 
it's okay to tell me to believe because you've not been in my shoes. But if you've been in my shoes, don't tell me to believe because I'm tired, overwhelmed, busted, distressed, discouraged because I've been believing for such a long time and it has not happened. I love Jesus. <laughs> because Jesus comes down to everybody's level. And if you're in that situation, this word is for you. And God says, I want to help you. But how does he help you? He sends his word. You know what he called his word? He says, his word comes like water, like rain. Come with water and rain. This is what the word looks like. Just because of what you've been through, you are folded. Everything is not working. Have you noticed when, an, when a cloth has a pattern and you want to change the pattern, what do you do before you iron it? You take water and you begin to wet it. And you begin, to, why are you wetting it? Water will cleanse, but water will also soften. God says, I know you've gone through a lot and your heart is hard, and your heart is tired, and your heart is discouraged. He said, what you need is the water of my word to do what? To wet you, to cleanse you, to what? To wet you, to, to cleanse you. Why? God says that I need to begin to prepare you for what I prepared for you. Why do you water the clothes? You are preparing the clothes for ironing. God says there's a future ahead of you. So I'm watering you so that when I begin to press you, you can align. So some of you need to allow God to water you and water away the depression and water away the discouragement. Oh my God. And we begin to water. God says it's time to water. Some of you need watching because your business went through a rough patch and you need some watering and you need some watching. Your heart needs some watching because of what you've gone through in relationship. You need some watching. And God is saying, that's what I'm doing with my word. I'm watering you. Why? If I don't water you, I cannot straighten you. So what God does ahead of time is to water you. Glory to God. What God does ahead of time is to what? Water you. In this service, online, it's been a tough year. Let God water you. Let God water you. Why? God has not only prepared a place for you. You know why God needs to water you? All the patterns of depression, of delay, of negative thinking, this cannot happen for me. Why is my life like this? God needs to straighten it out. He needs to straighten it out. But he needs to water you first. Someone say hallelujah. Let's go to the, let's go to the last scripture. Oh wow, I'm going to come back to this verse. I need to read it close. Genesis 26. Verse 22. I want to explain the word for the year. The Bible says this. Hmm. Bible says in verse 20, Genesis 26, verse 20. And the headsman of Gara did strive with Isaac's headsman, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the place Isaac because they strove with him. And he dug and not the well and strove for that well also. Have you, you know, this was when they found a well and all of a sudden the other guy said it belongs to us. Have you ever had a testimony that did not belong to you eventually? You thought you had the job but you didn't have it. You thought you were going to get married but you didn't get married. You thought you were going to get the breakthrough you didn't get breakthrough. You thought, you thought, you thought, this guy's a guy, but he never came through. You thought that funding, he'll give me one, he never came through. The Bible says, when they dug the well, other people came and said, this is our well. Then they dug another well, and they began to fight for the well. You know what I'm talking about? Why well, you've gone through three stages or four interviews, and you thought this is the job, and never came through. Why well, you're with this lady, and you say, this is the girl of my dream, and she walks out of your life. Why you thought that this funding will come through because they promised me and it never came through. It's about digging the well and losing the well. Then all of a sudden the story changed. Verse 22. What does the Bible say? The Bible says in verse 24. And they removed from a hence and dug another well. And for this well they strove not. And they called the name of the place Rehoboth saying for now the Lord has, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't hear you say with me, say from now. 
that's so weak say for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful it's powerful this is powerful this is powerful I know you lost the contract at the last bit I know their proverbs told at the last bit he said but this time it is different because it's Rehoboth it says the Lord has made room for us and now we will be fruitful what does that mean the Lord made room for us means we didn't have to struggle the Lord did it with ease it happened with what ease what is our word for the year it's our year of ease and bliss it's our year of ease what does ease mean ease means smooth uniform consistency it's not as if general will do well February will be bad uh -uh. every year doing well what does ease mean ease means uncomplicated ease means straightforward that means that this marriage you are trying to do will be straightforward it will not be complicated this deal will not be complicated it will be straight because, because it's not what we are fighting for the Lord has made room for us can you see it Praise God. Why is God sending you that word? So that as you go through the year, no matter what has happened, you say, 2022, there's a ring on the year. The ring is what? The Lord has made room for me and will be fruitful. I'm not, if it, whatever comes around, that is a word. The Lord has made room for us. We'll be fruitful. Let's stand up and pray.